Hey folks, uh, in this video we're going to talk about orbital mechanics. And yes, while that might sound complicated, actually a lot of it isn't all that complicated. Um, just knowing what to do. Okay. So um, we, when we talk about orbital mechanics, we're usually talking about energy. All right. And let's say you have the following. Let's say you have a planet. It could be Earth. And let's say you have a ship, a spacecraft. Okay. And you are traveling in your spacecraft near the Earth somewhere, okay? The Earth spacecraft system can have two types of energy. The total energy it's going to have is the kinetic energy of the ship, okay, plus the potential energy of the ship planet system. And uh, this equals one-half mv squared. Now, m is the mass of the ship, okay? And then remember, potential energy is always negative, so we got minus big G, mass of the planet, mass of the ship over how far they are apart center to center. Okay, so that's the total energy of a system. Okay, the Earth or the planet ship system. It's just a combination of potential and kinetic energy. Okay, now, what if this thing is in a circular orbit? So if, and this is a big if, circular orbit. Okay, well, if something is going in a circle, then we know that its orbital velocity, v orbit, is root g, mass of the planet, over r. Okay, now that we, we derived that uh, in an earlier video. That's the velocity of something going in a, now here's the key, circular orbit. Okay, this only works for circular orbits. This thing's going in an ellipse or traveling in any other path. You cannot use this equation. But if it is indeed going in a circle, then you may, okay? So if we sub this in over here, we get the total energy in a circular orbit, so I'll, I'll label that CO, is equal to one half the mass of the ship times the square of this, so G mass of the planet over R minus G mass of the planet, mass of the ship over R. And if you simplify this out, the total energy of something in a circular orbit is equal to negative g, mass of the, the whatever you're orbiting, times mass of the thing doing the orbiting, over 2r. Okay. Now again, this only works for the total energy of something in a circular orbit. Okay. So be careful about using this. But when you do have something that's in a circular orbit, boy, that's an awfully handy equation to have, okay? Now, again, I'll make a note. This is negative, okay? Um, because remember, where is zero potential energy? Well, it's at infinity, okay? So we're less than infinity, so we have less than zero energy total, okay? Now, what if you want to do the following? Let's say here's the Earth. And here's, let's say, the International Space Station. Now, we know the International Space Station right now is in a circular orbit, uh, and it's going about 17,000 miles per hour to stay in that circular orbit. Now, by the way, it's not truly circular orbit, but eh, go with it for now, okay? What if you actually wanted to launch the International Space Station away from Earth such that it escaped Earth, okay? Well, you'd have to launch it fast enough so that it could approach infinitely far away. It can approach infinity, okay? Now, let's think about that for a second. You want to make this thing go fast enough. Now, by the way, as it, if, you, if you let it go, it's going to slow down because the Earth's pulling on it, right? But you want it to go fast enough that it just reaches infinity, okay? Now, if you're, we want the minimum velocity to get here to get to infinity, we call this minimum velocity, we call it escape velocity. You're going to escape the planet Earth, okay? You're going to escape the gravitational pull of the planet Earth. Well, we want to know what's the minimum escape velocity, okay? Well, here's the idea. You want to just get to infinity at just a tiny, tiny, tiny speed. In other words, as R approaches infinity, you want your velocity to approach zero. Again, this is for the minimum escape velocity. Of course, you can go faster and then make this not zero anymore. But if 
we want the minimum escape velocity, we want our velocity to, as we get farther and farther away, we want to just make it to infinity at with almost no velocity left. Okay. Well, then what do you do? Well, check this out. Our total energy is one half mv squared minus gmm over r. Well, if r is approaching infinity, what's happening to this term here, the potential energy term? Well, it's approaching zero. And if we're just making it out there, our velocity is just about zero out there, which means what's our kinetic energy term? Well, it's about zero, <laughs> okay? So here's the deal. You want to set your total energy to approaching zero, okay? Now, this is, again, I'm going to repeat this again. This is for the minimum escape velocity. If you go faster than the escape velocity, well, then your total energy will be more than zero, okay? But if you want to know the minimum escape velocity, we set that total energy to zero. So then look what you get. You get one half mv squared. And again, that's the mass of the ship minus g, mass of the planet or whatever you're nearby, mass of the ship over r. You want this to be zero. Okay, well, check this out. So then you get one half mv squared equals g, mass of the planet, mass of the ship over r. Now, notice that the mass of the ship cancels. It doesn't matter if it's throwing a rock or a Tesla or the International Space Station. This, the velocity is going to be the same at this point to make it leave Earth. Okay, And then you get the following. You get v escape minimum is the square root of 2 g, mass of whatever you're trying to escape over r. Now, a side note, how does that compare to v orbit? Well, v orbit is the square root of g mass over r. So it turns out that v escape is equal to root 2 times v of a circular orbit. Okay. So, for instance, our International Space Station, we calculated in the previous session, we calculated v orbit for the International Space Station is approximately, uh, let me get that number for you. Sorry about that. Um, approximately, uh, I have it somewhere here. It was 7,000 something. Oh, there, uh, there it is. 7,698 meters per second. Well, if, which is a, just under 17,000 miles per hour. Well, the escape at that moment, if I take that times root two, gives us the following it gives us about 10,890 meters per second, which is approximately 24,000 miles per hour. So right now in the International Space Station's orbit, it's going about 17,000 miles per hour. If I were to instantaneously speed it up to about 24,000 miles per hour, it would leave Earth and never come back. Okay, so that would be your escape velocity there. Okay, now. Um, for the other one I'll, I'll play with, this is kind of fun, is uh, what about our asteroid? So we earlier calculated that the orbital velocity, if I were right here and I wanted to launch, you know, given the mass of the asteroid here and given that the radius of the circle we want to make is about half this dimension, which is about 270 meters, we calculated V orbit. And V orbit was pretty tiny. It was 0 0.094 meters per second, or about two-tenths of a mile per hour. So if I took a rock and gave it a little push at two-tenths of a mile per hour, it would uh, circle in an orbit, and the orbit took a while to orbit. Okay. Well, how fast would you have to throw your rock so that it never came back, so that it escaped? All right. Well, the escape for the asteroid would simply be root 2 times that v escape or v orbit for the asteroid, okay? And I got I get about 0.133 meters per second, which is about uh, just under three tenths of a mile per hour. So what that means is if you if you take this rock and throw it at about three tenths of a mile per hour, or more importantly, if you're on this asteroid and you jump and you give yourself a speed of more than three tenths of a mile per hour. You're going to leave that asteroid, and you're never going to come back. You're going to escape the asteroid's gravity. So that's why landing on an asteroid is really tough. They have to anchor themselves down when they land because it's, it's very easy to just to fly right, right back off. Okay, okay. so um, we have a couple things going on here. We have the total energy 
in orbit, which is the, the kinetic plus the potential energy. If, if, if you're in a circular orbit, we have a simplified equation for the total energy in a circular orbit. And then if we want to escape the object, let's say the Earth, then there is an equation for escape velocity. And it's very simple. It's just root two times uh, the orbital velocity, circular orbit velocity equation. Okay. In the next video, we'll actually plug and chug some numbers. And again, that's, that's one where I'd really, really suggest that you uh, try that out uh, to make sure that you're able to do the calculations. So I'll see you on that next video and have a good one.